welcome back graphic lovers we're back in the colony so right now we're just gonna start killing stuff now as i said on the last video uh, i wanted to talk about uh the combat system and the skill system in general now it's kind of funny how now can we kill this guy without dying close fight but we made it now let's uh, break down the skills a little okay so we know we get 10 skill points per level and 12 hit points per level now let's talk about how the attribute system was designed so we have strength dexterity and mana those are basically our primary Attributes that allow us to equip better weapon and equip better uh, bows and crossbows. Now, uh, they all cost one skill points. They don't have a scaling cost, so this was later fixed in Gothic 2. And honestly, I think that was a a good choice because here's the issue in Gothic 1, and you're gonna see that when we reach about level 30 or something. We're gonna be specialized in pretty much everything, and it's not so much an RPG, you're not exactly playing a role uh, when you can do everything. That's more of a Bethesda uh, style of uh, making games where you can become a god at everything. Personally, not a fan of that specific design, but to each his own. I like role-playing games like Fallout 1, like Fallout 2, like uh, Planescape Torment, uh, Tyranny, Pillars of Eternity, and so on. Precisely because they allow you to make your character exactly how you want it. Also want to mention Arcanum as well. Now, the problem with Gothic 1's design, and we can forgive Piranha Bytes because it, this was their first major game. And again, development started back in 1997. And 1997 was the day, uh, was the year where Fallout 1 was released. So, you have to understand that a lot of uh, systems, a lot of gaming systems back then, people still experimented with. And it's widely regarded as the golden age of gaming when most of the big IPs we know today uh, got established. Now. We can forgive Piranha Bytes for not making the best design in Gothic 1, but they actually learned from their mistakes in Gothic 2. Now. Okay, let's quickly kill Snappy over here. Now, these are strength, dex dexterity, and mana. And as, as I said, the cost is 1 to 1 to increase them. And uh, let's break down the other skills. So, one-handed sword fighting basically uh, costs you 30 skill points in total to master. The same applies for longbows, crossbows, and uh, uh, lockpicking and pickpocketing. So to master them, you require uh, 30 skill points each. Now we're gonna leave this uh, key and these scrolls over here. We're not gonna use them just yet. We're gonna leave them here for the future. Um, and here's the issue. You can actually specialize in all weapons. And two-handed swords, by the way, uh, they are extremely expensive to learn. The first level in two-handed swords costs you a whopping 30 skill points. And the master level is 40 skill points. So that's a total of 70. 70 just to become a master at two-handed sword fighting. Now, another <clears throat> imbalance issue is that the game sort of makes crossbows pointless uh, in the game. And the reason why that happens is that you can learn how to use a longbow exactly in the beginning without much issue. And you learn that from Cavalorn. So why would you specialize in crossbows? Why would you give it an equal cost if... The only time you can actually learn crossbows is when you actually end chapter 2 and uh, hit chapter 3. So that's 3 chapters middle of the game. 
you can learn crossbows. By that point, pretty much 99% of the player base will be a master when it comes to crossbows. And we have some wolves here, we can handle wolves. So, another issue is that uh, crossbows pretty much fill the same combat role as a longbow. They do slightly more damage, but they use the same stat. They both use dexterity, so they're not exactly unique in any sense that you'd want to become a crossbowman. It's more like a flavor choice than anything else. Now, let's quickly eat some meat and heal up because there's a relatively, I don't want to say difficult fight ahead of us, but let's start using some crossbows. And I'm just gonna see what's up over here. So up here, we're gonna find some scavengers and orc dogs. Now these orc dogs you can normally handle if you actually manage to climb up this rock over here with a jumping animation. Now, we're basically trading blows one for one up here, and it's not exactly the best approach right now. We might die, and we really need to heal up right now, because they're surrounding us. So, let's quickly drop a healing potion. Now, depending on the angle you choose, they can either get up or they can't, so... Let's go back to talking about weapons. If if we're safe in combat, we can just talk. So yeah, crossbows, I think that in a way they are a superfluous skill because the role of archery is already uh, filled by longbows and bows in general. Now, can we... Okay, we can actually kill these couple of last orc dogs right here. Now, you can see that our firing speed is not the best and it's obviously not the best because we have no idea how to use crossbows. They are incredibly fast if you max out the skill, about as fast as a longbow, as fast as any bow really. Now I think we can handle the last one in melee. So let's just Okay, couple of side swings and he's down. Now, this is one of the most dangerous areas in, in the forest here, by the way. There are only a couple of dangerous areas and this is one of them. The other dangerous area contains a mythical creature called a Shadow Beast. Now, we don't really have to worry about the Shadow Beast right now because we haven't uh, reached it yet. Our main goal is to simply uh, slowly clear this forest of uh, beasties. There, there are only beasts here, so wolves, scavengers, bloodflies, stuff like that we can easily handle. Wolves basically do one damage point to us right now because we have great armor, we have an amulet for protection. So yeah, going back to skills, uh, gothic uh, one and two actually <clears throat> made it so that uh, one-handed weapons and two-handed weapons actually behave very differently and this was a good design choice. One-handed weapons are really fast but do less damage than two-handed weapons and have a lower attack range. Two-handed weapons by contrast are slightly slower but do way way more damage and have a large attack range so you can keep a lot of enemies at bay if you use a two-handed weapon. Now, personally, I prefer two-handed weapons simply because I like the way they look, I like the way they feel. That's just a personal preference. You can finish the game using one-handed weapons, two-handed weapons, even longbows. It's entirely your choice. There is no wrong choice, and that's a positive aspect on how the game was designed. There is no really wrong choice when it comes to weapons. Some mobs like uh, skeletons for example have uh, near immunity to arrows which kind of makes sense since they don't really have a lot of flesh on them and by a lot I mean nothing. 
Um, what about other skills? So let's talk about how lockpicking was designed. Lockpicking, we're basically trained in lockpicking right now. We're not a master lockpicker yet. If you do become a master lockpicker, the only thing that really changes is that your chance to break lockpicks uh, really goes down to about uh, 10%, which is uh, really nice because at that point you won't really need to buy lockpicks. Well, you don't really need to buy lockpicks in the first place because you can always beat up merchants for their stuff. Now, pickpocketing, as I said, not a great skill. It's sadly kind of a useless skill. Uh, I explained in the last video why that is because you can just beat up people and simply take their stuff, which makes uh, pickpocketing completely useless. Not to mention that it's uh, easy to get caught, and once you do get caught, let's pop a few swiftness potions, shall we? If you do get caught, you're just gonna have to fight the person uh, that caught you, so... Yeah, not a really well-designed uh, skill. Sadly, again, I'm thinking that they probably shipped it the way they did due to budget um, restrictions. Now, up here, there's an abandoned tower, but before we're going to visit the abandoned tower, I want to visit the beach. Now, this uh, beach with some shipwrecks. The only things of note that are here are a couple of bottles of alcohol and some fire li lizards. Now, these fire lizards, there's five of them, so that basically means there are... There's over 2,000 experience points worth of um, leveling. If we kill these fire lizards, which we're gonna do. And now, I'm not sure the... Okay, the fortunately the crossbow connected right there, the crossbow bolt. Now, you... Ooh, this is not good. Not good at all. So you don't really wanna fall down. If you're gonna, if you're gonna fall down, you're most likely gonna die. Now, you really wanna jump up here. And you want you really wanna make sure you don't fall down. Because one hit and you're dead. This is how dangerous fire lizards sadly are in the game. Now, we need to find a way to target them. Okay, we managed to target you. Okay, so as I was saying, pickpocketing, not a very good skill. Kind of useless in Gothic 1. Uh, despite the fact that you can specialize in anything, you'd be better off putting points in something like, I don't know, maybe uh, strength or dexterity or mana points if you want to... Um, Let's save the game, just in case, if you want to become a mage. And there's no reason why to not become a mage, because as I said, you can pretty much become anything in Gothic 1. Uh, you can make uh, an all-round... Uh, not an all-round uh, A character that's basically a jack of all, trains, uh, all trades and master of everything. So that's really Gothic 1 right there. Now, Fire Lizard wandered here into our eyesight, which is perfect. Uh, what are the skills that are in the game? Acrobatics and sneaking. Okay, so sneaking, a uh, semi-useless skill, to be honest. Very semi-useless. Uh, most mobs will detect you, even if you are sneaking, and NPCs in the game sadly are kind of coded so that when you are near the detection range, they are going to turn towards you anyway. So the AI, not the best stellar AI. It does a lot of good things right, but also does a lot of bad things wrong. So not the greatest um, coding there. Now we can actually climb up here if you approach this ledge. Let's try this again. We can actually climb up here. And we're going to equip our crossbow. Now, these last two lizards are a bit more difficult to kill because they tend to run around a lot. Now, okay, we managed to target the target you. Okay, so sneaking, kind of useless skill. Uh, required to learn uh, pickpocketing, which is, again, useless. Uh, acrobatics. Acrobatics is actually... a uh, Pretty okay skill if you think you're gonna end up falling a lot. Uh, one of the things that I'm not too happy on how Gothic 1 was designed is that can I actually target you, sir? 
Can you please just move a few inches away from me? So there's a minimum target distance in the oh, okay. Managed to get him, so he's gonna run around a bit. Okay, so one more shot when he. Okay, that's perfect. Any other lizards around? Did we get everybody? I think we got everybody. If we didn't, well, we're gonna die a fiery death. Doesn't really matter. Okay, took a little bit of damage there while falling. Not a biggie. Not a biggie at all. Uh, so acrobatics. Uh, it's a so-so skill in the game. Not, uh, can't say I am really crazy about it. I do like the animation. I do like the roll he does. It does reduce the fall damage you take, but it sometimes causes you to take more fall damage than you would have normally. Now, down here is, it's not really a secret in the game, but it's an, a very, very spooky area. So, in this little cove right here, now, this cove, by the way, leads to a system of uh, tunnels. You can see the cove right here. That leads into a system of tunnels that goes all the way up to that uh, abandoned watchtower we just passed. Now, why is this cove uh, and the system really spooky? When I was a kid, the first time I uh, found this place, I honestly crapped my pants. Because I was uh, exploring the map, I wanted to find uh, easy mobs to kill, I wanted to find mobs that I could uh, level up with. And in this system of mines, we're basically gonna have our first experience with the undead. Yep. So... They aren't overly complicated uh, mines, we're just gonna quickly save the game. Now, if we're lucky... We might be able to land a few hits on them. Maybe with a fireball. Okay. So, we have a skeleton. Uh, they saw us, sadly. Now, the undead, really scary sounds, in my opinion. They also look pretty spooky. Fortunately, they have the same attack animations as humanoids do. So, if you get used to how humanoids attack... Skeletons shouldn't be that difficult for you. Now, I think we also aggroed another, another skeleton because, yep, we did. They can also do some nasty damage on you, by the way. And if you do take too much damage, uh, they don't swim. So you can just uh, exit the tunnels. And simply <clears throat> go to the shore, go to the beach, uh, eat some food, get some healing back. Uh, but one of the reasons I really wanted to visit this, this place in the beginning, it's because uh, the skeletons here give a lot of XP per kill. Uh, 200 and 300 XP, which is freaking amazing. We've almost leveled up again. Now, there aren't a lot of skeletons here, but there is something that's way cooler than that, and uh, there's, an, there's a monster called a Skeleton Mage, which is also present in Gothic 2 as well. Now, let's see, any skellies here? Okay, this is another dead end. Now, the tunnels are, aren't overly complicated, you can see a... Okay, now, this is the Skeleton Mage of the Watchtower, so... Skeleton Mage of the Watchtower, what he basically does is he has... Okay, fortunately only one Skeleton Agrados. Which is great for us, because we can handle them one at a time. They don't do a lot of damage to us, because we have some decent armor. Now, if the third Skeleton could pop right past the bend, that would be amazing. Gonna quickly quick save. Now, let's see. Now the skeleton mage of the uh, the watchtower. He has five summoning scrolls, and those scrolls basically summon skeletons. Each scroll summons exactly three skeletons. So 
that mage can basically summon a total of 15 skeletons against you. He also casts spells. Now, what we want to do right here is we're going to equip our longbow and if possible, we're going to try to snipe him. As long as we can snipe him, we can actually interrupt his... Uh, okay, we can't interrupt his casts because a skeleton just popped into our range. We're going to have to kill the skeleton first. Okay, a uh, skeleton warrior. Now, you can interrupt his cast if you do damage to him. It's a 10 second cast, by the way, so normally you have a lot of uh, time to interrupt his cast. Now, we took some damage. Now, the problem, we're gonna eat a lot of the griddled meat we have, and then we have so many healing items. Now, the skeleton mage of the guard tower also drops a very important item. It's a book called Chromanin. Now, not sure exactly how you want to pronounce it. I've always pronounced it Chroman, uh, uh, Chromanin or Chromanin. It's, I guess it's dependent on how you want to pronounce it. Don't think there's a correct pronunciation. Now, I want to see if we can actually m manage to... Okay. Okay, we... There's that skeleton that's preventing us from killing the mage. Now, I just wanna... Now, you can see, by the way, just how powerful a weapon with a long reach is. Because we can actually do a lot of damage to the skeleton before it reaches us. So, we can do a lot of damage in melee unless we land a critical hit to the skeleton mage. So, what we're gonna do instead is just... Equip a longbow, and we're just going to snipe him as fast as possible. He also has an Ice Bolt rune, and he's going to cast the Ice Bolt spell a few times, and then he's going to go back to try to cast another uh, round of skeletons on you. Now, fortunately, if we manage to kill him fast... Okay, and each time you, by the way, each time you land a hit on him, he backs away just a bit. It's not an overly exciting fight. You just need to hope you're gonna land enough hits on him before his magic kills you. And it's more or less down to Aaron Jesus at this point. Okay, that was perfect. Just killed him right in the nick of time before he finished his spells. Now we're gonna quickly quickly heal up and we're gonna loot him and see what he has now there's a very important reason I wanted to Venice uh, visit this place uh, right in the beginning because the stuff he has and I really want to quickly check are there any more skeletons left yes Skeleton left. Cool, cool. And anybody else? Is there anybody else here? Perfect. We can loot this guy in peace. So, Skeleton Mage of the Fog Tower. Now, he has four summoning scrolls, which we're gonna take. He has a nice bolt rune, which we cannot use because we do not know how to use runes. And he also has a book called Chromanin. Now, if you read the book, it sends you on a um, sort of puzzle around the map to find the other books called Chromanin. And each book is going to give you uh, some clues on where to find the next book. There are a total of six. And you can read it. It has a little bit of flavor text, but the real clue is on the second page. So, the wise one sees to having a general overview before he dedicates himself to his next mission. Now, this clue is going to send us to the highest tower we can find on the map. We're going to go there eventually, but first we're going to finish exploring this, uh, this little uh, cave system over here. These chests are basically unlocked. Some nice ores, some mana potions we're going to use. Now, anything else in this little alcove over here? Nope. Have a potion. 
and some is that potion a permanent healing potion or not it's not no biggie now we're gonna heal up a bit just a bit how much do we need 258 i think we can handle one more griddle meat and four more hit points we don't have anything that actually restores four hit points anymore now this is basically it this is the most important cave you can find we're gonna quickly save the game alrighty so this mine system let's finish first exploring the mine system and then we're gonna go up that specific path now these did this have a name did I just interact with something and I didn't realize it I had a feeling that no, no okay okay now there's another side tunnel we haven't yet explored. You can actually hear the skeletons in the distance. You can hear their bones rattling a bit. Now. Anybody else? Just wanna quickly, quickly check. We've picked up all the stuff. There's not a lot of stuff here. There are a few plants, some mushrooms. The big loot is what we got from the skeleton mage. Now, once we're gonna get go outside, we're gonna play a bit with those um, summoning scrolls we just got. So, one uh, important thing I want to touch on uh, regarding skills. So, the last skill in the game is related to magic. Now, we're gonna learn magic, I think, in chapter 3, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, magic has six levels. Each uh, level costs progressively more skill points than the last. So I think the first level is 10 skill points, the second is 15, the third is 20, and so on. Anything here? Okay, let's just... Okay, we have a skeleton scout in the distance. And I want to see if I can do some damage to him. Just a tad. Okay, we're out of mana. Not an issue. And you can actually see that these skeleton warriors actually do way more damage to us than the scouts. So they do have uh, levels of strength. Uh, we have 22 mana points. Let's just quickly eat some, I don't know, what restores mana, some stone root. Sure, we're gonna eat the stone root and Let's eat some delicious ham, because we haven't eaten any ham, have we? Okay, so we're gonna eat some ham. We're gonna pop another light scroll, because we wanna see what's uh, around us. I think one more ham should do it. Okay. And we should also start using these healing herbs we have. So, magic. Magic is pretty... Um, I'm gonna be honest, it's pretty janky, so uh, spells like uh, the Fireball spell, it's a channeled spell, so it takes a lot of time to actually cast one, it takes 5 seconds, uh, and there are stronger spells, there are better spells, like uh, the small Firestorm, the Ice Block spell is also one of the best spells in the game, in my opinion, simply because you can use it to... Um, anything else in this? Nope. So we had some... Okay, we have some beer over here. Anything else down here? Nope. We just came from here. Okay. So it's always nice that you can follow the trail of corpses to know where you've been. Uh, magic is a bit janky. They've upgraded magic and gothic... Um... Okay, I hear some skeletons behind me. One skeleton. Okay, magic is a bit janky because some spells require a lot of time to cast. And that's honestly not really great when it comes to uh, designing a magic system. Now, magic is powerful. I'm not going to deny that. But at the same time, you are limited by your mana. So once you run out of mana, you're pretty much screwed. Fortunately, Gothic 1 does allow you to multi-class, basically. You're gonna... Now, this skeleton hasn't seen us yet. And exactly as I say that, he turns around. Doesn't really matter. Okay, he actually burned to death. Now, 
This was the Gothic 1 vanilla bug I was talking about. Sometimes when you cast a fireball spell that does uh, damage over time, if you press control, uh, my default is control to uh, use the use button, for the use button, sometimes a uh, mob simply dies and you get the experience for it, so it can be exploited. I don't want to exploit that because it's obviously a bug. Uh, but it's one of the things that Gothic 1 uh, is famous for. It it actually has very few bugs overall, if you ask me. If we compare it to stuff like Bethesda games, Gothic 1 is actually pretty bug-free. It only has a few bugs, and if we play the patched version that we're playing right now, it, it only had a couple of critical bugs, and... Uh, those bugs were related to using uh, a couple of winches that were supposed to raise uh, some portcullises, some gates. Now, these are fixed in the patched version. In the original version, the bug was actually pretty bad because if you didn't save your game at the proper time, you could actually encounter the bug. And if you're lucky, the game worked. If you weren't, the bug would happen all the time and you basically would get stuck and couldn't progress the game. Now, can I use um, an ice block spell? Now, the ice block is nice simply because it's... Okay, I just want to take one of them out of the combat because there's three of them and I, I don't really want to die. Now, if we're gonna get lucky here, we can... Okay taking a bit too much damage, so we're gonna quickly fall back. And if any of them actually give chase to us, we're just gonna handle them one by one. So, pop a quick healing potion. And just take care of you. Pop another quick healing potion. Now, there's two left. We can actually handle two. Now, magic. Uh, it does have a lot of useful spells, though. And I... At least uh, they tried for a variety of spells. So you have stuff like uh, crowd control spells, like Ice Block, and there is also the Ice Wave spell, which basically freezes all enemies uh, around you for 10 seconds, which is a freaking awesome spell and might be even a bit overpowered if you ask me. But it's a crowd control spell, so in a way they're supposed to be overpowered. That's why we say crowd control. Uh, there are spells like healing, which can pretty much uh, heal your entire health in one go, if you have enough mana. And the later spells in the game are freaking awesome. There are spells like uh, Rain of Fire, which does exactly what you would think it does. It rains fire on your enemies, which does a ton of damage in a specific area. The area is always centered around you. But it's almost, I don't want to say an instant kill spell, but it can pretty much kill most low level mobs and medium level mobs in uh, one cast, which is freaking awesome. Now we're going to eat some of these mushrooms because we have a lot of shrooms. And we're actually going to um, uh, probably use a beer or something for our last... Uh, healing item. So, we've just exited the fog tower. Now, there's nothing else in this tower. If you climb up, you're just gonna get uh, a nice vantage point. So, it's a creepy cool tower that um, doesn't have any particular lore about it. You are free to make up the story uh, how you wanna see fit. I think this was part of some cut content. But we do get a quest. We're gonna end the video right here on top of this tower. We're just gonna treat ourselves to a nice bottle of wine for our efforts. And we are going to read the book we looted from the um, uh, skeleton mage. So this is the book. We, uh, we actually read it once, I think. But if you wanna pause the video and read it, go for it. Now, this book again added a quest called The Stranger, and the quest says I took a very strange tome from the skeleton mage in the Fog Tower. Chromanin, it seems to be a riddle, a mysterious stranger set in this world. 
the wise one, blah blah blah, sees in having a general overview. Hmm, I don't quite understand yet, but perhaps in time I will. Now, this is a very good point to end the video, because we finished explore the, exploring the Fog Tower. And I think what we're gonna quickly do right now is we're gonna take a trip to the old camp, because it's getting a bit late. And I want to keep exp exploring the forest, but only in the daytime, where you can actually see where you're going. So, we're going to do a quick transition to the old camp. So, we made it back to the old camp, and this is a good point to end the video. We're just going to take a little nap here in our old hut, and then we're going to be back in the big forest in the east. And we're gonna finish exploring it in the next episode. So I'm gonna wish you guys a wonderful day, even if it's gonna be one of those bad days for you guys. Wanna wish you the strength and wisdom to overcome it as best as you can. Because sometimes surviving is just enough. I hope you liked the video, and if you did, you can like and subscribe because it really helps the channel. And if you wanna really help because it's a new channel, you can buy me a coffee. The link is in the description. It's basically a platform in which you can donate to help support the channel. You can also visit my Patreon, but I honestly prefer buy me a coffee. And uh, because it has a better customer support overall than Patreon. And uh, that's about it, guys. We're gonna see each other in the next episode where we're gonna finish exploring the big uh, forest and we're gonna encounter a mythical creature called the Shadow Beast. Tum, tum, tum. So until next time, cheers guys and take care of yourselves.